in postmenopause, fitness clients generally have things smoothed out a little. Ironically, many may ask questions though, like, what should a woman over 60 do? And they ask me that because we are flipping 50. They say, what about flipping 60? <laughs> Misunderstanding that flipping 50 means the entire second half, the entire second 50. And it is really giving the middle finger to age of any kind. And we have the most, the largest changes occur generally a few years prior to or a few years after the five zero. And once we've gone through it, you have a little bit easier ride. So the answer is often more surprised, right? More intense and more frequency even are true for postmenopausal women. If we were comparing to perimenopausal women, how ironic, given the previous podcast episode I relayed. And by the way, if you haven't heard that yet, you probably want to go back and listen to that one because you're probably w working with women who are in any any stage of perimenopause, postmenopause, or mid-transition, and you're going to get to the other side or would like potentially to know their history. I relayed in that pr prior episode that based on physiology of menopause together with physiology of exercise and research featuring women in menopause, specifically perimenopause is a time when many women need to do less to optimize body composition, less volume that is, and less intensity if they're struggling with insulin resistance plus adrenal insufficiency plus chronic stress or any combination of that, if they can tolerate it, increased intensity, though not increased volume coming just from duration and frequency of the times per week you're doing it. So when we talk about volume with clients, we have to be very specific. There is research to say more volume can be better, but we need to be sure where it's coming from. More murky, muddy, moderate exercise is going to be devastating to muscle and bone density and to fatigue and that feeling of tired as well. So I'm Deborah Atkinson, and you are listening to She Means Fitness Business. It's a division of Voice for Fitness, and here at our business, Voice for Fitness, we know that you want to be yourself, a, an inspirational guide for women and the clients that you work with who are in midlife. In order to do that, we all need a profitable health and fitness coaching business to have a bigger platform to make a bigger impact, even if you have a struggle with money and finance and you don't want it or think it's evil or or dirty, you can donate it, but you've got to have it. The problem usually is a lack of clients or a lack of charging them enough so that you're really monetizing your time, the most valuable commodity that we all have. And we believe you deserve consistent, dependable revenue from clients you love. And I know how it is. I've been there at 49 after lecturing for almost 25 years about marketing and sales. I gutted my business and started over and even I was nervous about it. But I've gone from zero dollars in a month and very close to zero for those first couple of very lean years to six figure months. And so too can you. And this is not because I love business, love marketing, and love sales. I can say that I do now, but I certainly wasn't inspired to get into fitness because of that. And I understand if you're not, but it is a piece of helping more people. And if you can leverage those emotions, then now is the time to do it. I have a series of ways I work with people very easily getting more clients, making sure it's profitable the way we get you more clients and we save and spare your time so that you can have the life you love. But first, I want you to get my health and fitness pros scorecard. It's a two minute list you can look at with divisions of areas where you need to grow your business to know at a glance, where should you be focused? Where do you have holes and where could it be better when you know your numbers? If all those boxes are checked, if you know your numbers in each of those boxes, now you have the next level. I'm going to put the link to go get that scorecard in the show notes. If you have a mind like a steel trap, it's fitnessmarketingmastery.com forward slash scorecard for that download. But stay with me right now. Don't do it right now. Don't do it distracted. We're going to dive into this shorter episode 
For post-menopause fitness clients, these things are critical to know. For many post-menopause clients, post-menopause occurs when that moment when they're 12 months beyond having had a period, they become aware that they are postmenopausal in their 60s and they are well past the menopause spot and exercise needs to be addressed to avoid pitfalls that they've seen in aging family members. They're becoming or getting, acquiring more urgency. Like, oh my goodness, you know, I'm next. What do I do? At age 60, muscle mass loss increases from the 3 to 8% on average loss per decade that started after age 30 to 1% to 2% every year. Now that's a dramatic difference. Now's the time to monitor muscle and have a strategic muscle mass building plan. It's not really enough anymore to just start somebody lifting weights. You want to start lifting weights. You want to address the recovery, address the protein, and you're crazy if you are not measuring them before they begin and regularly throughout your program so that you can course correct if it's not working. Next is functional exercise. Yes, it should be a part, but going overboard on your defending of functional exercise being so much better versus heavy traditional weight training for older adults will contribute to additional muscle loss. We can't just move people around. And do they need that? Yes, but they need it potentially in their warm up, in their cool down, or between exercise sets, not only functional movement, or they may stay thin, they may stay lean, but they are not going to be able to, sorry about that, scared me, I don't know about you, (laughs) but they are not going to be able to maintain that lean muscle mass and get the strength that will help them age correctly. So this is really an important piece that we have to look at. Functional is going to be getting up and out of your chair when you're 90. That's going to require some basic strength training. Functional is maintaining bone density. We need to load those muscles and bones heavily, as heavily as we safely can. And again, there it is. I'm very popular right now. Next, the focus needs to shift from calorie burning and constant movement to preservation of lean muscle mass during exercise. That that is less cardio and more strength prioritization. So this is really key. And this is where many of your postmenopausal clients will ask you a question, something like this. If strength training is so important, why don't we do it more often? right? Because they're negating the value of recovery. We have brainwashed people or marketers or those people who create, whoever they is, create those memes on social media that you need to be doing more. You should be exercising today. Did you work out today? We ask people that. What we should probably be asking is, did you work out yesterday? And what did you do for recovery today? Nobody asks people that. People don't get a reward for taking a vacation. In in fact, people put each other down like, oh, I want your life. You have such a nice life. You know, must be nice, right? Instead of helping and supporting each other. So you may need to be that person and point out that taking care of oneself and getting the benefit from exercise will only happen if you're recovering from exercise. So very important. Okay. More days per week of strength is not the answer. Fatigue from life stressors for a a 60-something can be significant. They've got young adult family. They've got aging family. Career often still in play. And let's just face it, some people who retire are busier as volunteers than they were working. Caregiving at home together with exercise and possibly dealing with the effects of menopause unaware of how to manage um, the deliterous effects of their perimenopause when they were maybe not able to exercise because of insomnia or hot flashes or discomfort. These things, they're all paying for in postmortem. And these are very, very important. And they may have resulted in significant bone and muscle and strength loss. And right now, sooner rather than later is the time to mitigate that. 
Next is reaction skills. Your agility and balance need to be built into exercise routines without necessarily increasing time. And this is as we list all of the things people need is strength training for muscle and for bone density. They need impact. They need jumping according to science on the the regular impacts daily that can be helpful for building bone density. They need core exercise. They need balance. They need cardio. They should be doing high intensity exercise, but walking daily as well. And they need balance. And they're all like, I'm out. Like, I don't have time for that. This is a part-time job or not a full-time job. So you've got to point out to them that if you are giving them intelligent exercises and their warm-up is building in balance and or agility, and if they are between exercises doing balance or agility, they're going to be far better off. And this isn't another time. They don't have to also schedule in a yoga class. If they're going to yoga, in fact, their balance could still be poor unless they're really focused on transitions and this kind of balance. Getting into a pose and holding still in a quiet, calm, cool room where nobody's interfering with you is not the kind of balance we need to maintain balance when daily life calls. It's those multitasking moments when we tend to fall. And that is so important for you to consider. So plan well your warm-ups, your cool downs, and any ancillary exercise sessions between intense workouts that can cover the bases in minutes if you're planning really well. And that can up your value for any customer. And last but not least, well, I may give you a bonus, but this one is protein timing and the amount of protein should be a significant part of the exercise coaching in order to boost muscle protein synthesis now and 30 years in the slow down if nature was allowed to take its course. Meaning for a woman who's in her 60s now or definitely in her 70s, since age 30, her muscle losses or bone losses also mean metabolism losses. And that slowdown needs to come back. We want that muscle protein synthesis that is a boost when you're doing exercise of adequate intensity and bookending it ideally with high protein intake. Most women are not getting enough protein per meal or eating event. Say we're doing a post, post-workout post shake they may not be getting enough protein at those points in order to really make a big difference in their lean muscle mass. So you've got to chat with them a little bit about that. And now one last post-menopause fitness thought for health pros. I've got this for you. Most importantly, the ability to exercise and do so intensely. And in some cases like HIT high intensity interval training or high intensity repeat training, which is even better, more frequently than in perimenopause, that can stave off visceral body fat deposits, brain decline, and muscle and bone losses that are more eminent. The older we get, we really have to preserve those things, brain, muscle, bone health. And all of that is going to lend itself to better body composition. So you can exercise a little bit more when you've hit that, smooth things out, every, the ride is a little bit better. It requires planning to know the application, not just of exercise, but specific to women in post-menopause. And they're seeking support for problems. So there's not just an opportunity, there's actually a demand when you're using the right messaging, because there's also a fear installed in those who have started, stopped, they've gotten hurt. And at this point in life, you need to be able to overcome those fears using the correct words and definitely avoiding the wrong ones. But you've got to also pull them in, not by what you as a fitness professional, know it's important, but by what they feel is important to them. And that means sometimes there's a compromise in your messaging. We have to get their attention before we get the ability to help them. So there you have it. Today's show notes will be at fitnessmarketingmastery.com forward slash 
post-menopause fitness clients. And as you know, what are you waiting for? They need us more than ever right now. If you haven't heard the prior episode about perimenopause, I highly encourage you to also jump over there, make sure that you tune in because that one is highly valuable and inevitably you are listening or working with both at any given time. All right. I will see you on the flip side where we're talking next about menopause. Now, that may seem like a broad source, and didn't we already talk about that topic in postmenopause today and perimenopause? Well, actually, I want to bring this back to a, a well rounded look and talk specifically of what happens at that menopause transition, that MT. Often people don't know it until it's they're halfway through it because they hit that 12 month mark. And sometimes it's, it's, you know, a moving target. A woman may think I'm six months from my last period and think this is going to be it. And then it doesn't, she'll get a period again. So a lot of women just don't know. They know they're getting close, but it is still a transitional time when you want to know what happened or what is about to happen so that you can prevent it. All right, I will see you on the flip side. 